What's up, party people? It's your boy Jab back at it again. This time we got Mark IV done. That's right. Done already? What? How? Usually it takes me about six months, but this time around it's only gonna take me about six days. Okay, maybe not six months, three months. Anyway, so we had these two 40 pound propane tanks. I had to empty them as you just saw. I vented them all night. Now I had to take the, the dang valve off. So I first tried this pipe. Had this thing strapped down to the biggest tree I could find. It bent the pipe. How does a brass valve warp a steel pipe? Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, I got this big old pipe wrench type of stuff Mario would use, right? In <laughs> for Princess Peach's castle, right? Hey, but we got that. And I had to do a, quite a bit of finagling and snaggling around here. Had to pretty much use two pipe wrenches. Use one to get leverage for the other one. Really weird stuff, Archimedes type stuff up in here, right? All types of leverage games, but hey, it worked, so what can I say? If you guys want to do this, try the two pipe wrench trick I'm showing here. You know, it, it does give you quite a lot of power, you know, because the hard part was getting the valve off because of that, that little handle thing that's welded to the top of the propane tank, but obviously we're not going to cut that off while all the propane's still in there. So after that, I did a rinse with water five times to both tanks, which is when you completely fill it up with water, and then you dump the water out. And that will get any propane gas out and dissolve any propane liquid out, overall making it safe. So once we did that, I needed to make some straight lines on this. And this is kind of tough because it's a curved surface. How do you make straight lines? Well, I just took a block of wood, I just took a Sharpie from Milwaukee, and I just set it on top of that block of wood and just traced it around i'm mean, keep it simple you know there's all these advanced tips but this is the best way for me to do it and that's how i did it so we got that supposedly straight line and then we just follow it with the angle grinder you know what i'm saying now i know i know i set the cutting straight line just i do but you know what if i see the line if i can see it i have a higher chance of cutting it you know um less curved that's the best way to say it. i'm never gonna cut it straight <laughs> Just less curved, right? So I went ahead and I cut this off. It was really satisfying. It did feel like I was in Star Wars when they cut the doors open at the very end. I know for you guys, it seems like it the whole time because I sped it up. But, but for me, at the very end, it felt like Star Wars, okay? Look at that. Oh, my goodness. That, that was very satisfying. I can remember how I A felt. A nice and clean first cut here. The beauty of being able to mark something and cut on the line, right? So as you see, when we have the two cut checks lined up, it is literally the perfect length of this blade. So with that being said, time to grind this out and then weld. Rock two and three is done. Most consistent weld in the world? No, not a chance. But at the same time, it'll do the job. I can guarantee that much. All right, so here's how she looks on the inside. As you can see there, full penetrating weld all the way around, just like we want to see. Now that does lead me to this next point. You see these rings here? These are going to be an issue. Why? Okay, so these auger blades, these auger blades fit perfectly to the diameter of these propane tanks, like perfectly. But those internal rings they put in there, cock block them. Now, these rings, internal rings are on the other side of the actual machine weld on these tanks, so I'm assuming, you know, it's welded to there and it's just a part of it. So I think the easiest way to deal with this is literally just 
to unfortunately grind these down. Fortunately, it's not that much that needs to be ground down on these, but I feel like that's way easier than trying to remove that in any type of wear capacity. And that probably will end up damaging or weakening the, the weld that's on there. But that this ring probably is more for aesthetics or maybe not aesthetics because nobody's going to be looking on the inside of a tank, but more so the weld itself is in direct contact with the propane or whatever. Um, it's just an addition because it's not like this is like a bevel of another pipe. Like it, it's just a ring, right? But um, regardless, yeah, we're just gonna have to grind down these blades a little bit. To be fair, it probably they probably will work better that way because they are like a perfect fit. But for auger blades, you probably do want a little bit more clearance than this. Like there's almost there's barely any clearance. So. So this here is the Manway guys, it's a stainless steel 304, I ordered it off of eBay for $200 and right now I'm tracing a circle around on wood because when you weld these things you don't want it to warp so we'll use the wood as a heat sink. Of course copper or aluminum is better or any type of metal but this is the best I got and nor do I want to cut a circle out of metal, oh hell to the no, I'm not cutting nothing out of metal okay. Right, so now it's a matter of getting this manway on there, and just like before, you know, unlike the other things that were cut by hand, this manway was made properly, but um, I guess somewhere is a little bit off because we do have some gaps here. Um, not a big deal, once again, I can fill in gaps, especially with this thicker metal. Not a big deal, as long as everything is even, that's what I care about more. Than, than a gap, you know, making sure everything is nice and even. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, we would, I, I need to use um, 309L flux core welding wire. This is 304 stainless. And um, I don't need, I guess, yeah, yeah, because this is 304 stainless welding to carbon steel, so yeah, it is recommended that you use stainless wire so you don't have any cracks or anything forming um, but other than that we'll just put that those wood discs I made in here and uh, yeah pretty much just weld this just like that So I'll be honest, I honestly was really frustrated and I was just in a pissy mood while building this whole reactor just because I was mad the last one blew up and I was scared to death that this one would blow up and all my work would be worth nothing again. So I really didn't record that much because when there's a camera in my face when I'm kind of irritated I want to always punch it. So I didn't record a lot of it, the stuff from this point on but you know I just wanted to show you guys what we got. Yeah.